Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa. In today's video, we are going to take a look at bee cells, where they're found and what they do. This video is a special student collaboration between myself and student Ashley Guo. Ashley Guo has so cleverly done the animation for this video. I hope you enjoy it. Let's take a look at where bee cells are formed. Bee cells are formed within the bone marrow. The bone marrow is found within the inner portion of the long bones. Here, B cells are derived from lymphoid progenitor cells. These immature B cells then travel into secondary lymphoid organs, such as the lymph nodes and spleen, where they can mature and differentiate into immunocompetent B cells. Let's take a closer look at the B cell. B cells or B lymphocytes have B cell receptors on their cell surface. These receptors are involved in the activation of a B cell. Antibodies are actually secreted B cell receptors. They are also known as immunoglobulins and they are proteins. Each B cell has unique antibodies on the outside of their cell surface. They are all the same on an individual B cell, but they are variable between B cells. You can refer to my previous video for more information on that variability. Therefore, no two B cells are alike. When a B cell comes into contact with an antigen, it can be activated. Antigens come from outside of the body and can therefore float in the body, find a B cell, and then activate that B cell. This first example is going to show T cell independent activation of a B cell, or a B cell being activated by free floating antigen. If an antigen binds to that B cell, then that B cell is going to be activated. That um, cell surface antibody is going to internalize in that B cell and it is then going to turn into a plasma cell pumping out antibodies. The first type of antibody that is made by a B cell is known as IgM. However, the B cell will class switch and eventually make IgG. IgG confers immunity to an antigen. When we talk about immunity, we are usually referring to IgG and having enough IgG within the blood to be able to neutralize any antigens that may come into the body. However, plasma cells, activated B cells, can also make other antibodies such as IgA, IgE, and IgD, which all play a role within the immune system. When a B cell is activated, it also creates memory cells. These memory cells are more of the same exact cell that got activated in the first place that can then be able to prepare to fight that same antigen if it invades again. So the second time the response happens, it will happen quicker. In T cell activation, again, there is an encounter with an antigen. However, in this case, an antigen presenting cell internalizes that antigen, chops it up into pieces, and displays a piece on the surface of its cell in an MHC2. This forms an MHC2 antigen complex. A T helper cell can then come and recognize that MHC2 antigen complex. This activates the T helper cell. When a T helper cell is activated, it can then bind with an MHC2 receptor antigen complex on the B cell that was the same as the one that activated in the first place. This in turn activates the B cell. Once the B cell is activated in this fashion, it goes through the same process as when the B cell was activated by the free floating antigen. The B cell is then activated into a plasma cell, which can pump out IgM antibodies first. Eventually, there will be a class switch, and it will then pump out IgG antibodies. Again, plasma cells are also able to pump out other types of antibodies as well, depending on need. The activated B cell will also then form memory cells. These memory cells are identical to the B cell that was activated. 
these additional memory B cells will be available in case the body comes into contact with that antigen again. Therefore, the secondary reaction of the body with the same antigen is much faster as these memory cells are already in the body and there are also free floating antibodies now in the body to neutralize those antigens should they come in again. Because each B cell has different receptors on their individual surface, so each B cell, again, remember, will have all the same antibody receptors on their individual surface, but each B cell will be different from the other B cell. Because of this variability, the body is able to have these reactions to basically any antigen it will ever encounter. However, there are obviously some B cells that were, will never be activated. So this allows for a broad variability and allows the body to have this immune response against these different antigens. As you can probably see, this process takes quite a while, perhaps a couple of weeks. That's why the first time you have to go through the sickness in its entirety until the B cells have made enough antibodies to help wipe the rest of it out. However, the next time you come into contact with this, the body can easily wipe this out, probably before you even get symptoms. I hope that you find this video very informative and gives you a better idea of B cells and how they work. Again, this video was a collaboration between a student and I. If you or anybody you know would like to do another student collaboration with me, my Facebook information is in the description of this video. Please go ahead and contact me. If you have any questions about this video, please go ahead and drop a comment. I hope that you continue to support my um, channel by subscribing to my videos, liking and commenting. Thank you so much.